We're actually recording my audio this time, which is very helpful, at least for me. Um, and I'm about to play in a Dungeons and Dragons one-shot, where me and a group of allies are going to be playing as inquisitors hunting down rogue mages. Um, and it sounds like it's going to be a really fun time. So I'm making my character for it, and who better to feed up some mages than the one and only Jotaro Kujo. Um, from Jojo's Bizarre Adventures, uh, I was going to say part 3, but he's also in part 4 and 6, um, and a little bit in 5. Basically, he's some cool Japanese dude with a magical fighting ghost spirit that punches people real fast. Um, and that's what I'm going to make. Uh, a monk with a magical floating spirit, and he's going to beat people up and punch real fast. Uh, so, I'm now going to switch over to my character sheet. So, first things first we have to do for building our Dungeon Dragons character is choosing our race and our class. Instantly, a punchy boy has to be a monk. Oh my lord. Um, monks are great. They're all about punching people. And uh, one of their monkastic traditions um, monastic? Monastic, that sounds probably better. Um, is magical punching arms. Uh, astral self. Uh, which summons a spirit version of yourself uh, and lets you punch people. Which is exactly what happens in JoJo's with their stands. Um, of course. We need to fill in the first bits first. So this is going to be a monk at least to level 3 to make sure we can get the correct archetype. So, a monk who follows the way of the astral self believes their body is an illusion. They see their key as a representation of their true form, their astral self. Uh, their, this astral self has the capacity to be a force for order or disorder, with monasteries training students to use their power to protect the weak and others instructing aspirants how to manifest their true selves in service of the mighty. Um, which sounds really fucking cool, doesn't it? Arms of the astral self. At third level, your mastery of key allows you to summon a portion of your astral self. As a bonus action, you can spend one key point to summon extra arms. Um, not the full body, but more arms, more good. Um, when you do so, each creature you can see within 10 feet must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take force damage to equal to two of your martial arts die. Um, and then for 10 minutes you get super arms, which give us uh, the following benefits. I can use my wisdom modifier in place of a strength modifier while making strength checks. Very useful. The spectral arms can make unarmed strikes. Also very useful. Um, when you make an unarmed strike... We with the arms on your turn, your reach is five foot greater than normal. Very cool. Unarmed strikes you make with the arms can use your wisdom modifier in place of strength or dexterity for attacks, damage, and their damage type is force. Which is even stronger because there is very few things with force immunity. Um, we don't need any of the level six stuff. So, over in our feats. And traits, I'm going to shove arms of the astral self. Um, and because we're only going to, well, this one shot is level five, but I will be building the character to level six in case they level up some more afterwards. Um, we need our monk features. So we get one D8 per monk level. Uh, so that gives us eight. And we can roll two D8s in the Discord. Uh, I don't have a window set up for the Discord, but, but if I can type in my commands, eight, five and a three, below average, that gives us 16 minimum hit points, which is lovely. Um, what else do we have? We have our mung levels, mung levels, proficiencies. We can copy our simple weapons. Um, useful for throwing rocks. Jotaro uses his magical superpowers to blast people with them all the time. Um, one arsenal tool or instrument. Uh, his father is a famous saxophone player. So we'll take the saxophone. 
um, strength and dexterity and we can choose our skills in a second. Um, let's switch to the other window. Um, so over in other proficiencies in languages, we're going to put that and that um, because hopefully we'll remember we have proficiency with strength and dexterity saving throws. And now the next most fun bit, rolling our stats. Um, so, we were using a heroic method of rolling our stats, which meant if we rolled a 1, it would re-roll um, to give us pretty good ones. So, I have excellent stats, uh, which is good, because, oh my lord, this one shot might kick our asses. So, we have, over in the top corner, we have 15, 14... 12, 14, 18, which is big whammy one, another 16, which are brilliant. Uh, instantly, as a monk, I think we can shove our 18 into dexterity, followed by um, our 16 in constitution, which gives us plus three to all our hit points which boosts this by nine giving us 25. Um, so we can put a plus three we have a plus four at level five our proficiency bonus is plus three uh, what's next on the list we've got a 15 probably worth putting into wisdom uh, two 14s and a 12 well 14 and 14 go into charisma and strength for our good looks charm and uh, you know sometimes we might have to use physical strength if we are not using our magic super arms to do strength checks but why would i not um so we have a proficiency in here of four because we have plus two here and plus one here and plus two here and plus two here Dexterity, on the other hand, is a whole seven, so bitch is not touching me. Constitution is a three. Wisdom is a one. No, intelligence is a one. Wisdom is a two. And charisma is a two. Um, next up are our skills, or at least our monk skills. We get to choose two from this list, which is acrobatics, athletics, history, insight, religion or stealth. Acrobatics and athletics both probably make a lot of sense. But also, uh, Jotaro is a pretty insightful guy. We watch him bluff master poker players um, and even people who can read your very minds. Uh, so I'm thinking insight and athletics. Uh, athletics is strength, so that goes up to a five. And insight is wisdom, which is two, which is going to bring it up also to a five. But before we do that, we need to go back to our race because I'm going to be choosing the variant human uh, because Jotaro is definitely not a normal human. I don't think any Joestar is probably a normal human. Um, and variant human lets us increase two different ability scores by one. Um, which is pretty inconsequential for most of the ability skills we have. Because uh, they're even numbers. But one is an odd number and that means it will get its entire modifier boosted. So we're going to boost up our wisdom to 16. Making this a 3. Making this a 6. And making this a 3. And with uh, dexterity even, we're going to boost to 19. So that it's closer to 20. Because 20 is our big whammy number um we also get to choose proficiency in another skill we can make any choice here so um, so it's probably worth getting something like acrobatics jotaro has been known to jump off some rather high things and jumping is all acrobatics well it's also strength um, and magical ghost powers but that's fine 
Um, and this gives us another lovely seven, which means we're actually very good at falling off things. Um, what is left? Ah, we've got more monk stuff. Unarmored defense and martial arts. Both of these are going to go in our feats section. Um, but unarmored defense, beginning at first level, uh, when we are not wearing armor or shield, we will not we will be wearing our signature trench coat. Um, we get our AC equal to 10 plus dex plus wisdom, um, which is plus 4 and plus 3, um, giving us a lovely armor class of 17. Ooh. Followed by martial arts. At first level, we gain the ability. We gain my practice of the martial arts gives me mastery of combat styles um, that use unarmed strikes and monk weapons, primarily unarmed strikes for us, which are short swords or any simple melee weapons that don't have the two-handed or heavy property. You gain the following benefits while you are unarmed or wielding only un wielding only monk weapons, and you aren't wearing any armor or wielding a shield. So I can use dexterity instead of strength for attacks and damage rolls. Very nice because my dexterity is significantly higher. Uh, but that only works for unarmed strikes and monk weapons. But that's fine for us. We can use a d4 instead of normal damage for our unarmed strikes. Also very good because normally it's a plus one. Um, and when I take the attack action uh, with an unarmed strike or a monk weapon. I can make an additional one as a bonus action. Um, and that's a basically a free extra attack. Um, you can also make your own monk weapons, like a nunchuck, or a nunchaku. Um, but, we actually, oh no, at level 3 we still only get the 1d4. But, we get ten, plus 10 feet of movement from, not unarmored defense? Unarmored movement. But, before that we have key. This is a magical spirit energy um, that lets us do very cool things. Uh, very similar to a stand. Uh, not quite as cool, though some of them are pretty interesting. Uh, ours will primarily be used for flurry of blows, because punching people be good. And we also get unarmoured movement. What else? No, then it's back to tradition. So, unarmoured movement gives our speed of 40 as a human. Uh, we have a plus 4 to initiative, and... Very, very, very importantly, um, we need to put Ooh. key and martial arts on our mod. Oh, I'm not on the right window, but that's fine because we can do that. Um, unarmored defense and movement. Boom. All of our monk feats are added. We can add our punch. In here, we will have a plus 7 to attack bonus, and it will be 1d4, plus 4 damage. Not insignificant. Not insignificant at all. Um, cumin, done. Monk, done. So, we have our background still to choose, and three levels to talk about. So, background is rather easy. Um, we are going to choose... Uh, well, Acolyte, because Jotaro is a student. He ends up as a marine biologist. Uh, marine could also possibly work. No. Oh. Is that not it? Oh, websites. Background. So, we could probably choose Sailor, uh, Marine, or... Student, which is Sage. Is that the one where you're still learning? Criminal, he was in jail. Hmm, I thought this choice would be easier. Alright, background, sailor. Um, you sailed on vessels. This feels like pre sailing on vessels, though he has done some travelling. Trained for water fights. All right. You sailed on a seagoing vessel for years in the time you faced on many mighty storms for monsters of the deep 
who wanted to sink your craft to the bottoms of the ocean. I mean, actually, halfway through the adventure, uh, he has fought a monkey with a boat stand and an underwater murder stand. Um, ooh. Or you could even choose to be a pirate. Survive in a world full of sharks and savages. That sounds pretty criminally... Um, not quite school kid, but it gives us some fun features. You are trained for battle on sandy beaches and rocky shores. Hmm, that doesn't feel very Jotaro. You spend years learning the lore of the multiverse. Definitely not. Experienced criminal with a history of breaking the law. Hmm, none of those sound right. I think we're going to go for Sailor, um, but shove it in the pirate category so we can be that little bit naughtier. Ooh. Ooh, you can't control backspace in this program. Um, but that's fine, because you didn't even see me muck up typing four times in a row. Pirate! Next on our list is something also very important. Um, it is our equipment. Very quickly, um, as a pirate, we have our bad reputation, um, which means people who will know the fuck who I am. Especially since I'll be in my signature trench coat and have the fear to bring into people. Um, we're not going to worry about suggested characteristics, personality traits, bonds, flaws, um, because it's a one-shot and I can't be bothered. So skills, athletics and proficiency. Um, we already have athletics from our monk, so we can pick that into stealth. Um, because that was one of the monk options. I still remember it being available to us. And perception. Perception's very good. Zoom. Do we need anything else from here? Oh, tools. We can drive vehicles. And navigate. Helpful if you're going on long journeys to places like uh, Egypt. And we get a club, silk rope, a lucky charm. Um, a small stone with a hen... Oh, that's or um, or I can roll for random trinkets. Okay, that's weirdly a lot. Common clothes, ten gold pieces. So uh, we're going to take the rope and we're going to take the lucky charm. We're not going to take the club because we are a badass monk who punches people. Um, we also have common clothes. They are going to become a trench coat for us. Trench coat slash school uniform. Um, and 10 gold pieces, and that can go in our lovely 10 gold pieces thing, because monks do not get a lot of money. If I'm not mistaken, as I'm now going to do monk equipment, um, oh, well, you can choose money, can't you? Well, I feel like we'll go for the standard monk equipment, a short sword, or any simple weapon. We'll take two clubs then. If the game's going to keep giving me clubs, I'm... I'm not going to refuse. Maybe I could throw them at someone. Two clubs. Um, an explorer's pack for all our rations. Um, Egypt is a long way away. And ten darts. Again, throwing things at people's heads is always an option. So this looks like a pretty complete character sheet. Except um, we're missing two levels. Because... Rather than going five levels into a magical astral monk build, I in fact think um, the real secret to becoming Jotaro Kujo is actually becoming a fighter. So, fighters get three different things um, uh, if you take three levels in them. A fighting style and second wind. Uh, that's a heal and some way of punching better, hopefully. Uh, so quickly we can look through our fighting styles. And we don't have to worry about any of these class features. Uh, because it is not... Because uh, we are multiclassing into it. So we don't worry about them at all. Archery, we can do better at range. Blind fighting, defense. Dueling, great weapon fighting. Interception, protection, superior technique, thrown weapon fighting could be useful if we're throwing all this crap. Um, 
two weapon fighting wall unarmed. Well, unarmed would overwrite our normal things, uh, but it would give us a d8 plus strength, which would turn our 1d4 plus 4 into 1d8 plus 2, um, which is probably going to be worse on average. Well, that's kind of unfortunate. Um, I guess we might as well take... We might as well take thrown weapon fighting. And we can just lob stuff at people. Um, which might be helpful since at the moment we can only really punch people. Second wind is a lovely heal that we will be using, uh, hopefully, not a lot. But here is our big whammy, Axe and Surge. Axe and Surge lets you take two actions on one turn. That means twice as much punching. That's a fucking aura, 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 aura up in here. Um, so that's our main reason for going down this. And at level five, we need to roll two more d10s uh, to get our fighter hit points because they get a little bit more than monks 10 and a 7 uh, adding 3 to both of those oh that gives us 23 more hit points taking us to 48 oh that's a lot of hit points um, fighter 2 but as I was saying the reason we are becoming a fighter is Echo Knight. Um, a mysterious and feared frontline warrior from the Kryn dynasty. The Echo Knight has mastered the art of using Duomese, Dunamese to summon the fading shards of unrealized timelines to aid them in battle. Surrounded by echoes of their own might, they charge into the fray as cycling swarms of shadows and strikes. But this lets us manifest a magical echo of myself. Alara Stand. Obviously, again, level 5. Can't take it yet. But if my character, Jotaro, is to level up again, I will be able to summon a magical spirit that can punch for me. If that is not a stand with magical stand arms that can do super punching... What, what else is there? Um... And that was this weird video, because I needed to make this character. Um, no, it's not. I need to take a feat, because I'm a variant human. Haha! -ha. I almost caught myself off guard. Gosh darn it, where are feats? Um, feet, feet, feet. Feet for feet, feet, feet. Feats. Ah, oh, TOC 73, of course. Um, so, as a, the, uh, as the one shot we are playing, Inquisitors trying to hunt down magicians, I was very tempted to take Mage Slayer, which would make slaying mages a very easy time. Um, but, I also saw Crusher, which makes my punches better. Um, since every punch is, in fact, a bludgeoning attack, I can move it five feet. Uh... Punching boys and moving the Mac, pretty big Jotaro style. And when I hit a crit, then everybody gets advantage to hit them. That's like a brilliant bonus to attack. Uh, plus one to constitutional strength could be useful, uh, but who knows? So I'm going to take the Crusher feet. Mm, no, I'm not. I'm going to take the Mage Slayer feet. Uh, because this one shot is one shot, and sometimes I like to do well in D&D. &D. Um, so, when a creature within 5 meters of me casts a spell, I can use a reaction to make a melee weapon attack against that creature, or a punch, so that's extra punch hits. Um, when I damage a creature concentrating on a spell, it has disadvantage, so it's more likely to screw it up, and I have advantage on any saving throws against spells, which means I will have potentially uh, advantage and a plus seven to any saving throws against fireballs. Uh, so we're gonna take Mage Slayer. And this was a weird video. I'm not 100% sure how it will turn out, but enjoy, and I will catch you next time.